So we're going to start off this uh, part of the fluid syllabus uh, by looking first of all at the generalities of uh, fluid flow with friction and looking today in particular at how we analyze uh, laminar flows. First of all, we need to be aware that there are two important different modes uh, of flow for fluids in general, laminar and turbulent. So we need ways of describing those flows, and uh, we need ways of determining when a particular uh, problem or particular situation involves uh, one or other of these forms of flow. Bound up with the idea of uh, friction in fluid flow is the idea that <coughs> fluids ex exert shear stresses uh, both on themselves and on the walls of the uh, pipes and what have you that they're flowing through. So, beginning with laminar flow, there are really two aspects to uh, the flow that we're particularly interested in. We would like to be able to describe the effect of fluid friction on the flow within uh, a pipe or duct. One of the manifestations of friction in fluid flow is that we can no longer uh, necessarily assume that there's a uniform uh, velocity of flow uh, across a pipe or a duct. However, in the case of laminar flow, it's not difficult to actually uh, discover what the velocity profile is uh, across a pipe. That leads us to a way of being able to calculate the flow rate in a pipe undergoing laminar flow. And that in turn allows us to figure out the arguably most important parameter, which is the pressure drop due to the friction in the, in the flows. As a final flourish, if you like, if we know the pressure drop uh, and the flow rate in a, a pipe flow, then we can calculate the power that's necessary to drive that flow. And that's very often the practical uh, issue that we want to discover because it takes energy in the form of motive power for pumps to cause fluids to flow. We'll do an example, time permitting, at the end just to start the ball rolling with the actual problem solving. Okay, up till now then, we've been analyzing fluid flow without the complication of uh, friction. And we've used Bernoulli's <laughs> equation in a couple of different forms to allow us to uh, make useful analysis of, of different flow situations. But now we want to include the effect of uh, the shear stresses and the effects of fluid friction. The shear stresses work in opposition to the flow and they set up uh, pressure drops against the fluid flow. And one of the first things that we need to be able to do is to uh, relate pressure drop uh, to the shear stresses acting at the walls of a of pipe or duct. When we can evaluate the effect of friction, the pressure drop due to friction, then we can include that in what you might call a new improved uh, Bernoulli's equation, uh, a little bit more realistic in that in addition to the familiar forms of energy in a fluid, static pressure, dynamic head and hydrostatic head, we can now include uh, a pressure term representing the friction. That's the delta P term uh, on the end. So much of what follows is about uh, finding ways of determining what that delta P term uh, is. That brings us to a consideration of the kinds of flow that can take place because it turns out that the methods that we <coughs> need to apply 
are quite different in the two cases of uh, laminar and turbulent flow. We take the example of laminar flow first. This diagram reproduces the one on page three of your notes, uh, by the way. And all of the discussion, of course, is, is there in the notes uh, with a little more detail. We start with laminar flow because it's very simple. And the, the diagram illustrating the nature of laminar flow is equally simple. It indicates particles of fluid moving along parallel straight lines indicated by the, the green arrows. The diagram also indicates something important about real fluid flows, which is the length of the arrows uh, represents the, the flow velocity at different regions across the pipe. And this picture suggests what is actually the case, which is that the flow velocities uh, are highest at the center of the pipe and lowest, indeed zero, at the walls of the pipe. In fact, the uh, the observation or the, the assumption that the flow velocity is zero actually at the wall is quite an important one, uh, and that allows us in quite a straightforward way. So in laminar flow, we imagine layers, or if you prefer, concentric tubes or annually of uh, fluid sliding over each other in an orderly fashion. So the streamlines, the the lines traced out by particles are straight lines. Flow near the wall is slower than the center. That is, there's a, a velocity profile. And some examples, well, one example is the rather slow and graceful flow of viscous fluids like honey. By contrast, turbulent flow is, as the name suggests, a rather more chaotic sort of phenomenon. Again here, the, the green lines are meant to represent streamlines, that is, the paths of fluid particles as they flow. But the thing about turbulent flow is that it's much less orderly, although there is, of course, a, a bulk flow in the direction shown, individual fluid particles uh, not only have uh, a flow in the direction, uh, sorry, a velocity in the direction of flow, but they can have velocity across the, uh, the duct as well. So the particle paths are irregular, chaotic. One aspect of that is that there's mixing between different fluid layers. And mixing implies a couple of other practical uh, points about turbulent flow. The mixing promotes heat transfer and it also promotes momentum transfer. Flows in radial direction that I've mentioned. Example of turbulent flow, well actually there are a great many examples of turbulent flow uh, out there to be seen because um, the majority of real uh, flow situations uh, happen to be Turbulent. Laminar flow is a relatively uh, rare uh, occurrence, uh, which is a shame because it's the easiest one to um, analyze and understand. There you go. We need to know how um, to determine whether a particular situation is going to involve <coughs> laminar and turbulent flow because the, the way that we analyze uh, the two situations is quite different. And the outcomes, the, uh, the governing equations of laminar and turbulent flow uh, are quite different also. It turns out experimentally that there are a number of fluid properties and properties of the system like uh, flow velocity and pipe diameter which are important. The effects actually can be um, embodied or, or represented by a single number called the Reynolds number. This is a dimensionless number which relates 
this set of properties. We have the fluid density, the flow velocity C, pipe diameter in the simplest case of a circular pipe, and a new fluid property, the fluid viscosity. The Reynolds number is a dimensionless number, and it broadly represents the ratio between inertial forces and viscous forces in a flow. Most importantly for our purposes, the value of the Reynolds number is sufficient to determine whether a particular flow is going to be laminar or turbulent. When you come to analyze a real flow problem, the very first thing you should do is to establish whether uh, the flow is laminar or turbulent. So Reynolds number, non-dimensional, determines the nature of the flow. And here are the rules of thumb, uh, if you like, uh, by which we <coughs> interpret the value of the Reynolds number. So we can say with certainty that if the Reynolds number for a given situation is less than about 2,000, then the flow will be laminar. With near certainty, we can also say that if the Reynolds number is above about 3,000, then the flow will be turbulent. There is a gray area in between uh, those values. The Reynolds number is between about 2,000 and 3,000. Uh, it's called the critical region. It's the region in which the flow transitions between laminar and turbulent. And in fact, on one of the most common um, graphical representations of fluid flow, um, there actually appears a gray area um, in that region. So it's quite a good, quite an apt description. It's like ancient maps. Okay, well, of course, these numbers are in the uh, handouts as well for reference. As always, with a little practice, you will find that the, the numbers stick in your head. <coughs> 